coming from Luke chapter 19, verses 1 through 10, and it reads, And Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through it. And there was a man called Zacchaeus, a chief collect tax collector, and he was rich. And he was trying to see Jesus, which one he was. But he could not on account of the crowd because he was small as statue. So he ran on ahead and climbed up in a sycamore tree in order to see him. For he was about to pass that way. And when Jesus reached the place, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, hurry and come down for I must stay at your house today. So he heard and came down and he received and welcomed him joyfully. And when the people saw it, they all muttered among themselves and indignantly complained. He has gone into the to be the guest of and lodge with a man who is devoted to sin and preeminently a sinner. So then Zacchaeus stood up and solemnly declared to the Lord, See, Lord, the half of my goods I now give by way of restoration to the poor and if I have cheated anyone out of anything I now restore four times as much and Jesus said to him today is a messianic and spiritual salvation come to all the members of this household since Zacchaeus too is a real spiritual son of Abraham for the son of man came to seek and to save that which is lost. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you right now, God, that you have given us the spirit to seek and to save that which is lost. Thank, Lord, Father, I thank you right now that our hearts are being mended together in agreement with one heart and one mind in the mighty name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord, that you're dealing with those things that's trying to hold us back from walking in the fullness of Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. And, Lord, we just thank you right now, and we give you all the honor and all the praise in Jesus' mighty name. Somebody shout amen. Amen. Come on, somebody shout amen. Amen. So I want you to, uh, this is what I want you to do. I want you to look to somebody or shake somebody his hand or give somebody a hug next to you that you didn't ride with oh, that you didn't ride with and say this to him for you are the reason 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 yeah for you are the reason there you go for you are the reason there you go yeah there you go hallelujah there you go glory yeah hey for you are the reason yeah yeah show the love show the love yeah, there you go. For you are the reason. For you are, you may have your seats in the cross of the Lord. Everybody wait on me to sit down. I'm sorry. Hey, for you are the reason. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. For you are the reason. I don't know about you, but I am so excited in what the Lord is doing. Glory be to God. Why am I excited? Because God is reaching into the invisible places that we do not have control over. Listen, when you know that you got some help, Things change, don't it? Yeah. When you feel like you have support, things change, don't it? Guess what? The Holy Spirit is helping us in this season, I promise you. Amen? But we just have to depend and, and, and understand that there's a work that God is doing. And guess what? You are the reason. Church, what you are sitting in right now, it's not for the sake of making somebody's names great. It's not to glorify our organization or, or to, 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 to show the significance of a certain person or show the significance of a certain action. But the, the church is here because you are the reason. In other words, if it's not about the person, guess what? It's a wreck. Amen. You ever been in an organization that was so stuck and, and stiff-headed to the to the a legalistic aspect of it that they forget about it was about the person that you're supposed to be helping. Mm -hmm. Are y'all know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. Now, this is what I'm before I move on. This is what I'm trying to figure out. The eight o'clock be on ten, <laughs> but the people that come in later come in as if they they gotta get smoothed in or something. <laughs> like you know, let me work you in. Let me you know. Uh -huh. Well, glory be to God, they, they just woke up too. <laughs> I'm going to wake you up. Don't make me scream in here because I got a very annoying voice. <laughs> I get to holler in the house. My wife be like, oh my God, Sean, please. 
<laughs> but seriously, we, we enter into his gates with what? Thanksgiving and praise, right? Now, I ain't telling you to, you got to praise by, by saying something, but I am expecting you to, to look like you're alive. Amen. Yeah, man. Hey, I, I rebuke that sleep spirit. Come on. <laughs> Y'all know what I'm talking about. Wake up. Wake up. Right. But seriously, you know why? Because if I wanted to go through the moment, the mode, if I just wanted to go through the moment, I wouldn't care two bits. I preach. I did my job. I'm gone. Mm -hmm. But because you are the reason why I'm standing here. It's important that I connect to what God is doing inside of you. Amen. So in essence, the church itself is about making sure that we looking for the Zacchaeus or the woman that's considered to be the, the prostitute or the whore or whatever you want to call it in today's modern term. Thought, whatever. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Well, thought. Not. Not thought. Thought. Correct it in. I'm just saying, whatever you want to call that thing that you can't stand to be around your husband, you figure it out. Wherever it is. And you say, Sean, why are you saying that? Because Jesus shows us through the example that he gives in the text that they are the reason why I'm sitting here going through this place because guess what? He could have got very selfish. But throughout this process of this, this series, we've talked about different thoughts, okay? We talked about being a tree. Because, see, Zacchaeus, because he couldn't get around the crowd, and I like to compare the crowd to the church because people in church become so, you know, you know, I'm going to praise the Lord, and you don't care about nobody besides you, you don't care who show up and all that, but when you really look at it, you should care Amen. about the person you're going to see at church. Because if it's all about you, then that takes away the reason why Jesus came to seek and save the lost. Come on. See, when people think when people think about church, they thinking that this is the place that I can go to get help. Come on. This is the place I can go to get encouragement. Come on. This is the place I can go if I'm down. Guess what? They'll pick me back up. But if you're so fixated on you and not nobody but you, I'm just gotta give. You know, I'm by the Lord, but somebody beside you is, is hurting and they need you to just. Pay attention to him and just give him a hug and let him know it's so good to see you. I know you may be going through something, but I'm here to tell you that God loves you. He has a purpose and plan for you. Listen, what happened on yesterday does not have anything to do with your future. The enemy may, 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 may try to get you to look like that you're not who God created you to be. But guess what? God has created you to do a mighty work in the, in the land. And guess what? People going to try to come against you. People going to try to say this, try to hold you hostage by your past. But guess what? That has nothing to do with what God has already ordained before you even came into this world. Amen. Now what happens is that, spirit, that person's spirit gets exalted and built up because what? You are the reason. Yeah. Think about how it changes the atmosphere of the place when I know that, listen, I, I'm going to a place to give God praise and let him know that, he, hey, I, hey, he, that I love him and all these different things. But what about when I go, come and I'm going to do all that, but also I'm on the peripheral looking for who's lost. Think about how more effective the church is when the saint God be more concerned about the lost than they are about getting their praise on. Uh -oh. yeah. on. I know you ain't going to clap too long. Come on. Come on. I don't expect you to. You know why I don't expect you to? Because we've been coerced to do church so much that we can know how to hit a certain piano sound and everybody, oh, hey, <laughs> and start doing all crazy, right? But we haven't been coerced to pay attention to somebody that may be leading an encouragement or, or hurting or, or look like they just went through something. So, the, so the, guess what? You know what the devil loves? He loves for you to be dead or insens insensitive to the spirit of discernment. He don't want you discerning in somebody's situation because if you don't discern somebody's situation, you'll never speak a word to bring them up to the place that God desires for them to be. Come on. And he said that we shall all prophesy, right? In the latter days, our sons and daughters shall prophesy. Why should we prophesy? To exhort and, and, and exalt Jesus by name. But guess what? If we're never in a place to prophesy to somebody's life because we're not worried about them, uh -oh. nobody's getting helped. Everybody stays lost. So we have a world full of iconic people, but we don't have anybody really to be a team player to help build the team up so that we all come along rather than just me being the only one going along. 
Come on. Oh. Come on. Yeah. Woo wee. That's sort of make me rub my leg right there. <laughs> huh? And listen, so we talking about being a tree. In order to be a tree, guess what? You gotta allow somebody to climb up on you. See, the sycamore tree represents something that's really powerful because it shows us that we need somebody that's present, but that's willing to let me to step up on me or on them so they can see who Jesus Christ is. Because why is that so, so important? Why do we want them to see Jesus? Because we know that Jesus literally wants to go stay at the house of the individual that's climbing a tree. Think about Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus is known as a publican, known as a sinner. But he can't see who Jesus is because the crowd, maybe the church, is so fixated about, see me, Jesus, see me, Jesus, glory, come on, Jesus. But there's somebody that's trying to get through and see who he is. Come on. I'm and like, I don't pay attention to that. Mm. Are y'all hearing me? Why? Because if I can get people to see Jesus rather than trying to get people to see me or see the church, see, the church will be fine if we get people to get introduce people to Jesus. Right. Right. Yeah. Huh? If people have a relationship with Jesus, guess what? Church ain't no problem. Church ain't no problem if you're a believer. But the devil wants us to think that church is a problem so we don't come, never come together to do the work of the ministry to move together in a dynamic that it takes to help edify the body to the coming of Jesus Christ. Don't get quiet on me. Come on. Come on, Pastor. Huh? Ah, oh, we don't need no church. You don't. But guess what? If we're the church, we need each other. Right. We need each other. And the thing about it is, why do we need each other? Because there's people that need the salvation of the Lord. Not only do they need the salvation of the Lord, they need people teaching them. They need people prophesying over them. They need healing hands on them. They need, hey, they need, they need, they need pastoring. Yeah. Huh? They need all these things going on, but if they never come into a place that's communicating the kingdom as a whole, guess what? We have a bunch of people running around thinking that the church is just where they go to and, you know, chasing a man and throwing money on the stage and all of that extra stuff. You know how we think. So we allow the image that the devil wants us to focus on to keep us from coming together to do a work that God wants us to do. I know it. And it's really bad. Hey, it's really bad, you know, the past 20, 30 years. Like, it's really messed with our millennials that's trying to come through a place because we've seen such disdain in the body of Christ. Well, I thank God that I ain't let none of that affect me. I don't care nothing about that mess. Guess what? Somebody, gonna be, somebody, you know who mad at me? Somebody that's traditional and wants to see something the same way every time. Sorry. You ain't going to get it. But, 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 but listen. Why is it so important for us to introduce people to Jesus? Because guess what? The grace that Jesus extends to us will change our attitude. That's right. You can't change somebody's attitude. That's right. But Jesus can. That's right. And if we can get people to be introduced to Jesus, guess what? It'll take the load of us, off of us, thinking that we got to change somebody. I need to change them. No. You need to let them people see who Jesus is, and then God, Jesus, will do the changing. Come on. That's the that's the equation right there. So guess what? You you won't have to be trying to lose a sleep. Trying to be like, oh man, anybody? No, get them to Jesus. Let Lord Holy Spirit. We pray that you draw them. Yeah. See, that's the purpose of the Go Fish campaign. That we depend on Holy Spirit to draw the people that we cannot make do anything, but we know God. You can invisibly deal with their heart, deal with their mind, and help them to understand the grace of God that's on everybody's life if they accept it. Now, throughout that process, though, throughout that process, the struggle be between all of that, between myself and maybe others, because some of y'all perfect, y'all ain't never say y'all wrong or nothing, so I ain't going to say on. you. Come on. Come on. Come on. Oh, well, I'm, 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 you know, everybody in church perfect. You know, you don't. No, sir. No. You're supposed to do that. <laughs> you know how you give a testimony to somebody like, what? I cannot see them doing that. <laughs> Deliverance. I cannot believe they used to do that. What? What club? <laughs> Who's Paul? <laughs> <laughs> but you know what happens? Because we put so much on the, 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 the new, 
and we're not transparent to show people that there was an old, it's harder for the old to step into the new. Because they can't never see themselves stepping in the new because I can never, but if they never hear your story, how can they know that there's hope for them to step into the what? The new. <laughs> Y'all good class. Oh, Come on. Glory. We get it. We wait. Because, guess what? We need the help of the Lord to help our confession align with the reality of our faith. See, the, 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 biggest, the biggest problem, the biggest conflict is that I ain't about what I'm saying. Come on. The, the biggest problem is you say, I, I believe in Jesus. But you don't believe in Jesus being in you. See, we don't have any problems for, we want Jesus to see us, but we don't want to do what Jesus stood for. Amen. We want Jesus to be in, in our heart, but we don't want the work in the heart of Jesus to, to, to come forth outside of our life. Ooh. We want to hold on to who, this is who I am, instead of stepping into who Jesus wants us to be. Come on. Hey. Transformation is not easy. Y'all familiar with concrete? Yeah. You ever tried to break it up? It's hard, ain't it? Yeah. That's how people's hearts are. And if you don't bring, if you don't put yourself in place of submission to Holy Spirit, ain't gonna be no breaking up. There, there's no breaking up where there's no brokenness. Come on. So, so God, hey, that's why, G, that's why um, David was a man after God's own heart. He was had a broke, he had a contrite heart. In other words, when he was wrong, he was willing to admit, I was wrong, man. I missed it. I missed it. I, I missed it. Because where pride sets in, there's no changing. Where, the, where, where pride is prevalent, where pride is up front, guess what? There's no change in my mind. That's why Jesus has to be the person I'm in a relationship with because when I'm in a relationship with Jesus, guess what? Now I'm in a place where my attitude, my mindset can be changed because we know in Romans chapter 12, he said, be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove the good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. See, we, we prove the will of God as our mind is transformed. But what we don't realize is life sometimes shapes our mindset and if we don't allow people in our life to be able to, 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 to help us, the Bible says that the plans of the Lord are established through the multitude of counsel. So what happens is the multitude of counsel, God's counsel, helps to establish what God planned on doing from the before I got into that circumstance. See, that's why when circumstance happens, if you're not careful, the circumstance can cause you to go away from what God ordained for your life. Because that's the whole purpose of the enemy. The systems of this world is not driven by God. The systems of this world is driven by the prince of the peace of this world. I mean, the prince of this world. That's that's Satan. He's 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 engaged in the airways. That's why every time you pull up the you uh, the TV, FX, and all this stuff, you got soft porn going on. Mm -hmm. uh, Y'all know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Are you right? No. Yeah. no. That's true. Y'all y'all know what I'm talking about. Oh yeah. You know where you got turn and your kids can't sit in there and watch. You can't even sit there at a regular bro. I ain't talking about HBO. I ain't talking about Showtime. I ain't talking about Cinemax. I ain't talking about Regular TV. Whatever. Yeah. You can't even watch a regular TV show and have your kids beside you without you. Turn your head. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well. Come on now. Those of us that make our kids turn their head. You know. right. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't see what is going on. They eight years old. They looking at somebody laying up naked doing stuff. Okay, all right, whatever. But I'm just saying. We, we, we have to be conscientious, but this it takes humility, man. That's the point I'm getting to. The pride, if we don't deal with it, guess what? Jesus was meek and humble. Jesus was meek and humble. And guess what? Meekness has to be a team player. It has to be a team player. You know, okay, let me, let me help y'all because y'all y'all looked a little distracted. We got a lot going on. What if Jesus was focused on people making him feel good? Mm. When Jesus steps and goes to Jericho, and he's walking through the, the through the city. What if Jesus had this thought, thought process that I just want to be appreciated and valued? And his gift is to preach the kingdom of heaven. When he goes and he knows this crowd is coming, his thought process is going to determine his message. But not only is it going to determine his message, it's going to determine how he sees things. Mm -hmm. 
I want y'all to stay with me. Because think about it. Say, for instance, I'm LeBron James. I'm sorry. Not, I ain't going to say LeBron James. I mean, LeBron, if you watch me, I'm, I'm not using you, like, saying that this is how you are. But I'm just saying, like, like for real, like, let's say, for instance, I'm, I'm like, cold like that on the field or basketball court like LeBron James. Let's say I got that, this type of gift mix, right, that I'm really good like that. And listen, LeBron James coming to town. LeBron, no. I'm going to have a crowd of people waiting on me. I'm going to show these people who I am. I'm going to show them who, who LeBron James, King James is. Okay? I ain't talking about you, LeBron. I'm just, I'm just trying to say something. When I get there, where I don't feel that there's some type of appreciation, that's going to determine how my gift goes forth. If I'm meek and lowly, if I'm LeBron James, and I'm looking to encourage just one person, I'm not looking for the crowd. I'm looking for that person that's incapacitated and somebody's not looking to pay attention to help bring them along, and I'm just going over there and maybe take my tennis shoe off and let them know, hey, excited about LeBron James just to, just to encourage them. In other words, when Jesus came, he didn't come looking for accolades and knowing I'm going to move the crowd because I know I got a crowd of people waiting on me. Mm -hmm. He came understanding I came to do what? Seek and save the lost. So when the lost showed his face, he was able to see what the lost was. And that's why our heart got to be in the right place. That's why meekness has to be a team player because when you get in self, come on. you will never be able to see the lost when you step into the crowd. Right, that's true. Think about that. If I'm not concerned about the loss, all it takes is about five or ten people to walk up to me and pat, my, pat me on my back. Mm -hmm. Next thing you know, my, this, my, my mindset is away from the person that's broken and hurting. That's right. Huh? That's right. I know what I'm talking about. Huh? That's right. So Jesus, he moved with meekness. He moved with humility so that when he stepped amongst the crowd of the people, he could easily discern the person that went through different circumstances in order to see who he was. Because he could have easily got caught up in all the crowd that was, hey, Jesus, look at me. Glory be to God. Lord, you are great. Come on, show us your miracles. Show us what you can do and all that extra stuff. You know how we do we know we, when, when we know somebody likes what we do, oh, come on, show us how you do that. Okay, all right, I'm going to go ahead and do it. You know, no, he wasn't like that. He, guess what? He, he looked up, Zacchaeus, come on down. I'm going to come to your house. Mm. And guess what? He didn't care what the people thought. Yeah. They muttered among themselves. That means he heard what they were saying. Oh, he yes. didn't just call down Zacchaeus, who's a sinner. Yes. And he will go down and go to his house? Come on. Jesus didn't care about the crowd because he was more concerned about seeking and saving the lost. In other words, you are the reason. You don't prepare. Come to church several times a week. Or go sit down and counsel with people. You don't sit down and go through pain and hurt, heartache and all that, and then go back and just, just to hear your name be called. It should be to see and save the lost. And when it becomes an ordeal when it's not about that, that's when our heart steps outside of meekness, being a team player. Oh, oh look, yeah, the Lord is doing the work. Yes, he is. He's doing the work in the house of God. And guess what he's getting rid of? Selfishness. Yes, he is. He's getting rid of. So if guess what? Selfishness don't want to be a team player. Selfishness don't want to be a team player, but Jesus shows us. And he, you know what? His meekness is so strong that he's he's being obedient to the Father. He's being obedient to the Father. And he's being obedient to the Father. So we're the reason the Father's love is so great. He said, for, I, uh, 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 for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believeth on him should not what perish but have what? Everlasting life. So he shows us an order of a thing. If I want, if I want to step into a place of being to where that person is being preferred because I know the Father cares about the person, I need to submit myself to Jesus. That's why you don't have to work through a whole life. If you submit yourself to Jesus, guess what? You don't mind showing love to your brother and sister. Right. Come on. Is a lot going on in your mind right now? A lot going on in your life? Huh? You offended? You feeling some type of way about what happened somebody did you in the past? Maybe. Huh? Yeah. You, 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 you ain't forgave somebody that you should have forgave, but you can allow that unforgiveness to keep you walking to a new place. Right. Huh? Guess what? Those things is the things that the devil wants you
you to be in, in, caught up with because you won't never step into your future if you keep on holding on to that. But if you keep on moving in bitterness, you keep on moving in unforgiveness, you keep on moving in disdain towards a person because you feel like you're not the most vulnerable place in my life and they sit there and done this to me. Who? What? Okay. Maybe they lost. But if I'm found, I have a purpose and a plan in the earth. I have a purpose and a plan in the earth. And guess what? You're the reason. You, you, you're the reason. I know we got a lot going on sometimes. It may not seem like that a person may not feel like they are the reason. But if we all have the mindset that I'm here because of you. Oh, I want to help that person because it's that person that it needs to help. I want to do this because I know the Father is concerned about how, how, how you are healing and how you're working through the things that you're going through. If I know, if I move with the Father's heart, guess what? We won't have so much bickering, gossiping, backbiting, whoremonging, revenge, bitterness, unforgiveness, The Father's heart helps us to move together in the singleness of heart that we see in the book of Acts. So as we navigate, as we move through, Jesus, this, this statement in verse 10 is very important because this statement shows the why. The statement shows the why he went through Jericho. The statement shows oh, the why Z Zacchaeus is who he is. The statement shows us why Zacchaeus climbed up the tree. The statement shows why Zacchaeus gave up all his goods because that showed his faith as a son of, of Abraham. See, your faith, guess what? Your faith determines your position in heaven. And, but it also shows us that, listen, Jesus allowed these ten verses, these nine verses to be communicated the way they were because he came to seek and save the lost. He's trying to show the heart of the Father. And when we get away from the heart of the Father, we will find ourselves more fixated about trying to create something for us to be beneficial rather than helping to benefit somebody else's life. So it's very intentional that we don't allow ourselves to become so caught up in our feelings, to become so caught up in our ambition that we keep running over somebody else's hurt. Now, this is the problem that we face a lot of times in church. When you want to get down to the hurt of a person's life, they run. You can't control somebody running. But you can't control the person in your presence. So we have to love each other, and we have to be willing to face the issues that's constantly keeping us back from stepping into the new place that God desires for us to walk in. The devil does not want you walking in your future. That's why he's known as the accuser. So if I want to make you mad and get you to back up 50 feet, guess what? I'm going to bring to fruition what you did two weeks ago. Yeah. You ever been in an argument with your spouse? Yeah. <laughs> don't, act, don't act random. <laughs> and it seems like what you said ain't really making a man. Yeah. And then you bring up something that they did or something, something happened a ways ago. Oh, no, you didn't bring that up. Oh, y'all know what I'm talking about. I know you didn't bring that up. You know good dog where I wasn't. You want to move somebody the wrong way? Bring up their pants. Come on. Especially when you've been delivered from it. See, that's why the devil try to wise. Let me talk to wise for a second. That's why the devil try to throw confusion in your home when you try to bring up what he used to do. Ah, yeah, I remember when you used to do this and do that. Ho, 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 ho. I ain't that dude. What is you? What is you talking about? I've been up in here. I ain't doing all right. Don't even bring that up. That's hey. That's that, hey. That does not apply to the situation. <laughs> Now you get all intellectual now. <laughs> you, you, you categorize. Hold on, that don't play. Hold on, now, now you know what? Good, I was doing this and doing that. I, was, I had all that stuff going on. But, that, but see, but, but we're not 
careful. Remember, the, the devil the accuser wants to get you distracted. Yes. So instead of dealing with the point of that's really the issue, he wants to get you to focus on something in the past. Come on. Yeah, he will. Hmm. Why? Because faith will always oppose what people say. Listen, your faith is the only thing that's going to keep you in there when other people start saying something different. Your faith, look, we you mean your faith, your, your faith, your belief in who Jesus Christ is. Zacchaeus was a son of Abraham. Literally. Hmm. But his, his, his profession allowed people to tell him that he wasn't that. He's a sinner. He's a publican. Man, he's just doing his job. That has nothing to do with his preordained place. But his faith allowed him to say, you know, I'm going to give four times what I think I've stolen from somebody in order to make sure to let you know that I'm real about who I believe in. Come on. Come on. When it's all said and done, what you do does matter. So you can say, well, this and that. No, show me that you care and show me about what you plan on doing to show your faith in what you're saying that you believe in. Mm, come on. And that's why Zacchaeus showed that he was truly a son of Abraham. Because those that believe by faith, Jesus Christ, you are now by faith become the seed of Abraham. Now I step into the blessing of the Lord because now I believe in what the work that Jesus Christ done on the cross. And a lot of times we allow that enemy to hit me sideways. He'll come with somebody to get on your last nerve. Yeah. He'll come with somebody to try to hold your past against you. Yeah. He'll come with somebody to try to tell you, you how are you going to do this? You ain't even got that. Mm -hmm. He'll come with this thing that opposes your faith. And I'm here to tell you that you are the reason that everything that has happened is going on. Jesus went through all that. He went through going, and listen, notice this. He went through the shame. He went through people spitting on him, dragging his skin off of him, the white meat off of him. He went to the cross. He was nailed to the cross because you are the reason. You say, well, he was doing that to be obedient to the Father. Guess what? The Father's heart was to love. He so loved the world. So his obedience put forth the reason why he went through that shame. And every now and then, you're going to have to go through something that's very uncomfortable and sacrificial in order for somebody else to see who Jesus is. Come on. Yeah, that's sobering, ain't it? Huh? That's sobering. That I got to die to myself in order that Jesus wins. I have to die in order to win. Your flesh don't want to die. I promise you. He's fighting you right now. He's dealing with your emotions. He's going, he's, you feel it going on up in your belly. Or this. You, feel, you feel the uncomfortableness of having to deal with things that you don't want to deal with because you've been doing this to try to cover it up because you don't really want to deal with it. Guess what? You have to deal with that jungle because if not, he will stay in that place known as your heart until you're 100 years old. you still be bitter. Let's break it now. Let's break the cycle now. You can't stop what your daddy did. You can't stop what your mama did. You can't stop what your brother did. You can't stop what your sister did. Listen, pray that God restores and redeems them. That's, it is what it is. But God, guess what? His grace is sufficient to restore me, to redeem me. He just needs some people to believe. Amen. Amen. To believe. Believe enough to be a tree. Believe enough to want to see Jesus come to somebody else's house. Believe enough to be willing to allow your confession to line up with the reality of your faith. Believe enough to say, I'm going to do this because it's for them. Are y'all with me on today? Amen. Huh? Mm. Do you believe that God wants to go and snatch up the people that you can't get to because you, really, you know that they won't hear you? Call on Holy Ghost. Call on the Holy Spirit. But don't be nasty towards them. By loving kindness have I drawn them. That's it. You're not here because somebody was nasty to you. You're here because somebody loved you when you didn't deserve it. Do y'all hear me? You're standing here because somebody loves you through your mess. And listen, we're going to make the devil, we're going to shame the devil today. 
We're going to shame him and make him so mad that he, he's going to start to cut up and start acting crazy. Yeah, you know how you, when you tell a kid no, and then you've been giving candy for six days straight, and then you tell them on the seventh day they can't get none? <laughs> I got six kids. Listen, let me tell Lennox on that fifth day he can't get some. <laughs> That's what we do though. That's a simple illustration of a little child. But we got grown folks that we do that, we just don't come out in the form of that. Amen. Stop going through your temper tantrums. Get yourself in order and allow Jesus to come into your heart. Do y'all hear me? God wants to restore you, he wants to redeem you. And guess what? It ain't gonna happen if you keep on, every time something don't line up with how you feel, you running and jumping. Ooh, I'm talking real good. Ooh, hey, Jesus. Come on. High five me, Periscope. <laughs> YouTube. There, there you go. Seriously. Seriously. Ain't y'all tired of these same old cycles happening inside of you? Look, I ain't say nobody else. Of you. Ain't you tired of letting somebody keep getting on your last nerve? Yes. Guess what? It ain't them. You got to deal with you. Come on. Mm. If you're ready to deal with you, I want you to raise your hand. If you're ready to deal with you, now, only if you're ready to deal with you. If you, I ain't talking about nobody else. We ain't got time to deal with nobody. We got to deal with ourselves. If you, if you're ready to deal with you, I want you to raise your hand. Come on. If you're ready to deal with you, if you're ready to really seriously deal with the, your heart and deal with the things that's going on inside of you, I want you to truly. Now, this is what I want you to do. Raise, stand up. I'm not gonna have you come to the office. We'll be here forever. Okay. <laughs> I was like, oh God, it's gonna be 2.30 for getting out of here. It's not. Now, if all your hands are ring, hands ring, okay, all right, well, glory be to God. Okay, so, so now, 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 this is what I want you to do. I want you to close your eyes. I want you to close your eyes. This is very important because some people are here today because somebody invited you. Okay? Do you realize that you're here because somebody loved and wanted to see the fullness of God in your life. That's the reason you're here. Now, on the flip side of that, some of us are here, we're just kind of going through the motions, and God says he wants to deal with you today. He wants to deal with your heart today. Because your heart will produce things if you don't deal with it. If the wrong cells have operation in your heart, it will produce different cancers in you. And God is saying this, 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 that I, I need you to be healed and stop allowing cancers to be developed because you allow the enemy to sit in your heart when you haven't dealt with them. You know what I'm talking about. You know what you haven't confessed. You know what you have not said. God, I, I, I'm feeling some type of way when I was 12 years old and, and, and you know, somebody did something to me I ain't they had no business doing. Hey, I get it. Had it happen. I got beat when I was nine years old. Got beat like I was a grown man. Well, a six-year-old, seven-year-old, something like that. Yeah. But what I can't I can't hold that man back no more. I had to I had to truly renounce because when that happened, it hurt me so bad that I didn't trust another man for 20 years. Come on, doctor. I didn't trust another man for 20 years because of how I got beat at six. And if you don't renounce, if you don't say, God, I, I, I'm sorry, but I was so hurt by that. And God, I forgive that person. God, like, please do whatever you need to do to bring healing to my life. If you don't come to that place, guess what? That thing will torment you until you're 50 years old. And all I'm saying is God wants to bring deliverance to you. Jesus is my deliverer. He's your deliverer. And I'm here to tell you the things that you were hurt by when the enemy came in. Because see, all of a sudden, you got so traumatized by the circumstance. So at any time something gets close to it, seeming like that, guess what? You start acting crazy. Guess what? That's a spirit influence in that. And you will never grow to your next level in life if, you have, if that happens and you keep submitting to it. You have to deal with it. Now, this is what I need. I need agreement out of you in your heart. That's why I ask you, do you want these things to really change that's going on inside of you? If you really want this to change, I, want, I need you to say yes. Yes. I need you to say this, Jesus. 
Jesus. You are my deliverer. You are my deliverer. Jesus. Jesus. I need you. I need you to drive out. To drive out the hurt. The hurt. The pain. The pain. The hate. The hate. The anger. The anger. The rejection. The rejection. The abandonment. The abandonment. And the fear. And the fear that has been choking me. That has been choking me. During my life. During my life. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I plead the blood of Jesus over me now. I plead the blood of Jesus over me. Oh, 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 oh. yeah, we're getting weak. We're getting weak. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I plead the blood of Jesus. I plead the blood of Jesus. Over my heart. Over my heart. Over my mind. Over my mind. Over my spirit. Over my spirit. And over my soul. Over my soul. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Come on, let's give God some praise. Come on. Come on, there you go, there you go, there you go. That's right, that's right. It's easy to praise up here when you let stuff go. That's right, that's right. Come on, that's right. So, so, so now maybe you're here, and 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 you you know you you never made a profession of faith of your of Jesus Christ being your Lord and Savior. We want to get the opportunity for that. If you're here right now and you've never professed Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you have never accepted Him into your heart. I want you to raise your hand. I want you to raise your hand. If that's you, okay, okay. All right, glory be to God. So everybody just needed deliverance then. You know you can be saved and still have stuff in your heart, right? Come on, yeah. come on. Huh? That sound right, man. Yeah. Huh? We're in the gateway of Sabbath. It's like everybody been in church all their life. But on the flip side, God is bringing deliverance because why? You are the reason. You, Jesus came for you. Jesus came for you. He came for each and every one of you. And when the devil starts to make you think that he didn't come for you, you know that's the devil. Hey, hey, I'm, hey, say, say, oh, no, no, thank you, Holy Ghost. I will say this with me. Father. Father. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Help me. Help me. Give me. Give me. Discernment. Discernment. Over my life. Over my life. And other people's lives. And other people's lives. So I can help. So I can help. Bring them. Bring them. To a place. To a place. Of deliverance. Of deliverance. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Come on, give God some praise. That's good, man. That's good. That's good. Listen, we believe in God. If you are here today and you made a, a confession of faith, you, know, you rededicated your life, or uh, you haven't been baptized, next Sunday, Celebration Sundays, Go Fish. So get you a Go Fish t-shirt. If we don't have any, we're going to order them tonight. So you need to get your size tonight so you can have them Sunday, Sunday morning or uh, next week. If you want a, a Go Fish t-shirt. But we're going to be baptized. We already got like 18 on schedule to baptize. So if you want to get baptized, you need to let us know. But we dumping them in the water next Sunday. And it ain't going to be outside. We're going to do it right here. We're going to put a tarp down and we're going to dump them. <laughs> we're going to dump them like fish up in this joint. We're splashing water. We're going to sit all over the screen and everything. Look, what else? Okay, the shirts are $10. No, one service. Oh, yeah. We're only going to have one service next week. Yeah, we're going to pack it all in. <laughs> don't have old flow. You get it late, you're in trouble. <laughs> and don't ask why they go home. <laughs> so we're going to have one service for, until further notice. Okay? <laughs> so from further notice. Yeah, I'm right. What's my deal with y'all? No, so listen, 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock. Somebody say 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock. One service. One service. Hey, celebration service. Where your go fish? You come in here with a pink suit? I ain't going to laugh at you. No, I'm just going to say, I'm fishing, you know what I'm saying? Whatever, you know what I mean? Like, but I'm going to say, but, but, but please, hey, if you, if you cannot afford a shirt, let us know. We don't want to leave anybody out. Do y'all hear me? Amen. Are y'all with me? Amen. So you ain't got no excuses. No. If you got pride, we'll pray for you. If you're too proud to say I can't get it, guess what? I'm sorry. We got you get delivered and then we can help you with a t-shirt. <laughs> 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 All right, I think we're on one page. Glory be to God. God is good. Listen, first time guests, make sure you see us down the hall. We got a special gift for you to let you know that we really appreciate you coming out to Renovation Church. Let's give God praise one more time. Remember Wednesday night, we got